poplar trees planted 10 years ago as whips around 10 years ago unbelievable very interesting tree poplar lots of different varieties member of the birch family now they're pushing two foot the diameter of the basal crown they have an extraordinary uh, branching strategy whereby wind goes in one side and just air comes out the other seriously though they are pretty amazing very open branches sparse leaves adapted to absorb wind energy perfectly this shelter belt ten years ago was not a shelter belt it was a bunch of spruces striving to survive conifers as shelter belt trees I mean they're okay but you get the foliage is so dense and they can't back bud on the inside so they don't regenerate very well if there's a storm and they're so dense you get this kind of air rotor effect behind the shelter belt and it's not really a shelter it's a turbulent area right behind but poplars no very open their leaves are absolutely categorically adapted to absorbing that wind energy you can see the leaves I mean you've got different sized leaves depending on how much light they get so the leaves on the outside of the tree are really quite large whereas if you when you move into the inner branches of the tree they're much smaller and you get a finer denser kind of foliage and they grow super fast just 10 years ago these were goddamn whips very upright tree not like some trees I mean some trees you'll get they start out upright and then they spread out like oaks beeches looking at deciduous trees but the poplar no it continues to grow upwards now there was some spruce here and they've been completely overtaken these spruce were here before these poplars were even here I mean they must have been here at least five or ten years before I don't know the leaves are very cool as well the the petiole what connects the leaf to the to the stem this is flat so it allows the leaf to move in the wind it allows the leaf to absorb that energy and also the shape of the leaf um, is is such that in the wind it kind of curls up into a cone shape and becomes very aerodynamic you can see the, the crotches on this tree as well the the angles at which the trunk uh, and the branch meet those angles are very very uh, tight angles so um, this tree unfortunately is very very short-lived and one of the reasons is the tight angles of these branches you get bark inclusion as the branch thickens and then you get a kind of fretting which injures the branch at the branch bark ridge and kind of acts as an opening for disease the nodes on this tree as well they're spaced alternately they're not opposite nodes if you get an opposite node you can get bar branches developing in the top of the tree two branches coming off at the same uh, level and this area can thicken quite extensively and again cause injury to the tree because of the excess weight very good for firewood poplar and they've been coppiced for many many years their, their BTU is actually higher than ash it's obviously higher than spruce and pine and you don't get the soot that you get with the conifers like the pines and the larches you don't get that um, 
thick kind of oily soot that goes up the chimney and sticks, condenses on the side of the, the chimney and causes problems. Very quick burning though. People planted these trees, birch and poplar, years ago. For, I mean, for hundreds of years, coppice them every year. And you can actively coppice these and maintain their health and have great firewood. I mean, these will grow 12 foot a year if you coppice them correctly. You can get poles out of them. Very interesting and uh, nice, fast wood. So poplars, as I mentioned, they're not very good at sealing themselves up after injury. So they're not very good at this compartmentalization, this um, blocking off infected fungal cells, um, coping with bacterial infections and fungi. So this is the reason why they're, they're so short-lived. I mean, this farmer here can only really expect 80 years of service from these trees before they really start falling apart. Very soft wood, because they grow so fast, the wood is very, very soft. And one reason why wood is hard or soft is just the, the growth rate. So if a tree has suffered in its life a lot and survived and grown very slowly, often a softwood tree, the wood will be much harder. The leaves sound absolutely awesome in the wind, down to that flat petiole and the, the general shape of the leaf. Now, if you check online, you'll find that people are saying that the, the petiole on the leaf, where the leaf connects the stem, is very flat. And that's one reason why the, the leaves sound so great in the wind and they do sound brilliant in the wind I mean they've got this not just the visual effect of the leaves um, in America they call um, some poplars quaking aspen and there's a very good reason for that not just the visual effect of the leaves moving which is awesome but the the, the sound there was some wind tunnel experiments with these trees just to see how the leaves react and they're very good at withstanding wind and that's another reason why they're used very frequently as a wind break the leaves won't break off the stems very easily just because of the shape of the petiole and then the leaf this leaf shape is um, it's either ovate or chordate. I think it's more chordate, really. It's, But in any case, the shape of these leaves allows them to withstand wind very, very well. And if you check online, if you're interested, you can see these uh, videos of these experiments. I think if they're still there, Across the tree they vary in size and shape. You get chordate shaped ones like a heart, you get ovate and, and big and small leaves depending on the light. So these trees definitely maximize the light that they can get. If, if a branch is getting a lot of light you'll see big leaves, a, a big surface area out there to catch that sunlight. And these trees on the inside as well get the benefit because their branching is, is so sparse and their leaves, they don't block the light from the inside. So they get chance to get those back buds on the inside, make use of that, that shade on the inside of the tree as well. So if the leaves on the outside, if the branches get damaged, then, you know, they back bud on the inside and they can get right back to doing their job as this shelter belt. Now this farmer as well, one of the reasons that he planted these trees here was because there was a hell of a lot of water. There's a cattle court behind here and there was loads and loads of water coming down from this this hill and also it, it provides shelter of course for these these cows. 
So there's even some seedlings here. Now, some are eight feet high now. I mean, that's in just a few years. You can imagine if these trees have the, the optimum environment with all the water, they can really do their business. Trees are not even hybrids. And the, the hybrid poplar grows a hell of a lot faster than even these trees. Um, a lot of these hybrids are far more open um, and they're not as um, fastidious as uh, upright. So uh, they do make very nice individual trees, these hybrids, um, and they grow extremely fast, much faster than, than these, but I mean, these grow fast enough, surely, within 10 years. It's pretty unbelievable. And if you're looking at poplar trees, planting and buying, um, I would advise against the hybrids and also don't plant them near buildings because obviously they're very aggressive rooting. They're meant for the wind, they're meant for the waterlogged places, very stable root base on them. So I'd advise against the hybrids and one of the reasons is that we have in the UK the black poplar and it's an endangered tree. Um, it's officially listed and still you can buy this tree for sale. They are, um, they do have male and female trees. So if you do buy a tree, then buy a couple of trees and plant them all reasonably together, especially if they're black poplar, because part of the reason that they're so endangered is you've got no planting and the male and the female trees are too far away. They're wind pollinated. So the pollen just doesn't get to uh, where, it's, where it's needed. But not a very long lived tree either. You can coppice these trees, you can make amazing firewood with them. What a truly versatile and epic tree.